Happy 2024, everybody. It's time for your real estate market update for the Twin Cities, and it's my favorite one where we wrap up all of 2023. Now, before we get into home prices, we've got to talk about those payments and it was all affected by interest rates. That was really the hallmark of 2023. So I ran a couple of scenarios for you. Here's what it would look like for you if you bought a house in January, 2023. Now I'm gonna use the same numbers for both. So we'll say you bought at 400,000 and maybe your property taxes were about 1%, which is pretty normal. Homeowner's insurance definitely is going up. We're not gonna talk on that, but usually around 1800 bucks a month right now in Minnesota. And if you're doing 5% down in January, you would have had around 6.5%, 6.45 was a pretty common 30 year fixed rate mortgage. And that'll cost you just over 3,000 a month. 3,031 is the number for January. And then in December, interest rates were up to 6.67. Now, if that doesn't look terribly significant, it's really actually not. It's $85 per month difference. I mean, that's something, but that's not a ton. But the, here's what I want you to see. Mortgage News Daily is who I usually look to for interest rates. And this is just a live look at their website, you can see here. Um, and here's here's kind of the scenario. In 2022, they had peaked just about seven and a quarter, seven and a third for mortgage rates. So that was the big squeeze that we were going into 2023 with. So then when all of a sudden 2023 came around, we were in the mid sixes and we're actually feeling really good. We were very optimistic. We're thinking, sweet, the worst is behind us and rates are gonna start coming down. The problem is you can see from my cursor there, the exact opposite happened and it was actually kind of a slow incline the entire year and we got up to just about 8% was our peak in mid October. But that's actually not the most significant thing either. In fact, with interest rates, it was really the volatility. And what I want you to focus on what I believe we're through and what I'm hoping we're done with really is if you look in this blue line, that's Mortgage News Daily's uh, weekly predictor there. It was so much up and down that you just simply didn't know from one week to the next what your payment was going to be. So as I said at the beginning of the year, you might have had a payment a little over 3000 That payment at 8% would have been $400 more per month with the same scenario. But the problem is maybe you, you know, you called me, we got your buyer consult done, and then you worked on getting pre-approved and a month or two later, you're ready to start your showings. The problem for buyers in 2023 was that from when they began the process to when they really got active and looking, their payment could change by hundreds of dollars. Also, one more pro tip for you if you're thinking about buying a home. I do love mortgagecalculator.org. That's where I got all these numbers from. If you're trying to figure out what a comfortable monthly payment is for you, I just recommend go to mortgagecalculator.org. You can use about one or 1.1% for those property taxes. If it's under 20%, leave in their PMI number there and homeowner's insurance, you're probably looking about 1800 bucks a month. So put that together and it'll give you a good idea of what your payments would look like. Now with that, let's dive deep into home prices and what happened around the Twin Cities in 2023. Let me pull up the past few years. Now, if my graph looks like a bouncy ball jumped across the screen like it does right here, you know that we're looking at the month to month changes. There's a huge difference between looking at the rolling month changes, which shows us seasonality, and looking at the rolling 12 month average, which shows us on a more macro lens how things are changing over the years. So I'm gonna reference back and forth. I just want you to keep an eye on the graph so you know what you're looking at. So as you can see right here, January 2023, we started at $342,000. That was that median number. In June, we went to 382, and then we ended the year at 353,700. So overall, from the beginning of the year to the end of the year, about 11,700 in price changes. One thing that is super notable for Minnesota's market, in case you're relocating from around the country, I mean, I've had so many, I think I had 14 people relocated in last year alone. Wherever you're coming from may have a completely different market. We're extremely seasonal in Minnesota, and so with that, whether you're a local that's thinking about buying a home or you're coming in, you need to understand from January to June last year, our homes went up in price by $40,000 just in those six months. So you need to prepare in advance for that. We'll talk about some future forecasts coming up at the end. Um, but overall, you need to plan for seasonality and just know we didn't really see a ton of difference overall from January through December. Now, if you're bringing that back into your payments, if we're looking from January through December, you can see here, I ran the same scenarios as before, but I'm also gonna factor in the changes in the median sale price. So for January, if instead we go with the median sale price there, which is 342, interest rates around six and a half percent, that payment would be $2,620. Now I'm gonna use a fixed $3,500 as your taxes, just so we can have apples to apples comparison. Then you can see at the end of the year, your home price would be about $353,000 if the interest rates went up to 6.67. 
here's probably a better snapshot so you can see the same home would cost you about $120 more when we factor in both the change in sale prices and the increase in interest rates. Now, what do I look at the median sale price, but this time on a rolling 12 month average, this will give you that zoomed out look of how much prices are changing year over year. December, 2019, you can see 280,000 was our median sale price. One year later, we were at 305, so that's about $25,000 increase. One year later, 340, so that we're, we were up $35,000. And then the year after that, an additional $23,000. So it did slow down a little bit. This year, we definitely hit the brakes thanks to those interest rates. That's a really good number, actually. 368 was our rolling 12-month median sale price around the Twin Cities, and it only went up by $5,000. So that's a fraction of what it was most of all of the last years. And in case you're wondering, yes, those are extreme increases that we saw 20, 21, 22 and we didn't want to see those. So last year, a year ago, I was predicting maybe we'd be up a percent or two or even flat. Uh, and to be honest, we were even okay if that number went down. The reason for that is because we'd seen such sharp increases so fast the last five years that we needed to see that number kind of flatten out for a little bit. I don't think that's gonna be the case moving forward. And fortunately, last year's prediction came pretty true. So we'll see if I can do a repeat for this coming year. For those that are super nerdy, I know you're looking forward to this slide. I'm not going to stay on it too long, but if you're curious to see what that bouncy ball again looks like from the bottom of January to the peak, usually around June, 14, 14.1% and 11.9 is what we've been up the last three years. And then from that peak in June down to the bottom of December, 5.3, 8.2. And then this year was at 7.6. So both numbers, the amount we went up and the amount we came down were pretty tame. They were pretty average. Um, I'm very glad to see that the first half didn't go up as much. And I'm actually a little bit surprised we didn't see the drop a little bit more. Here's probably a better look at what that was averaged out to. Again, you can't just add and subtract those numbers because I'm taking from the peak to the bottom and then the bottom to the peak. Um, but this is what we'd look at, kind of a rolling 12 month number there. So 2021, we went up more than 10% year after that 6.76 last year we were only up 0.82 percent so as far as i'm concerned that's probably about a best case scenario i didn't really want to see prices coming down but i was very okay with them if they did we just didn't want to see that number to keep going up and up and up and up with inflation for better or for worse interest rates were very effective in how quickly they rose interest rates and that's the reason that that number is so low for 2023 but really you're like all right i get the prices i get the numbers what does it feel like buying a home? And this is probably the most crucial part of all of it. So if you're going to buy or sell a home in 2024, here's a little bit of what you can expect and what's changed over the last year. Month supply of inventory is what you're looking at. If we're high on there, we're in a buyer's market. If we're below uh, that red line, we're in a seller's market. We've been in a really strong seller's market for a long time. Now, has the market crashed in Minnesota? Clearly it has not. We love to see what we're seeing right now. January this past year, we were at 1.2 month supply of inventory. Six is kind of that middle of the road balanced market. And so we were just a fraction of that. That was an extremely difficult market. Pretty much nobody was happy. I mean, someone that was only selling but not buying, they were loving it, but basically everybody else, uh, it was a very, very tough market, nobody liked. So with that 1.2, we've come up to 2.0 month supply of inventory for December. That's a really, really good number. That's pretty much right what we expected. Um, because we were expecting that to start to shift up. If you do see in the news, media, TikTok, all the places where they're like, oh, everything's crashing, home prices are whack, everything's, you just need to come back to this chart right here where you can see, no, we're actually in a really healthy swing. It's happening relatively slowly. Um, the sky isn't falling at all. And I wanna see this number to keep going up. Not dramatically, I don't think it's gonna go up significantly, um, but we do like the direction that we're trending with that month supply of inventory. As a result of that change, you're also gonna to expect to see the days on market shifting. Now, uh, as far as how things are feeling, is this a good chart or a bad chart? The reality is when we were at 11 days on market in January last year, it was extremely difficult. Back to everything I just said, honestly, nobody liked how fast things were selling because you had to be really on top of it. Homes were selling for way over list price in an instant, right? I had some selling before they even became available, before they were sight unseen, you know? Nobody really liked that. So. There is such thing as home selling too fast. I would argue 11 days on market is just simply too fast. We did stay at 19 days on market for most of our year after very steadily rising up. And then we came down, interestingly enough, in December to 18 days on market is where we ended. So this was very interesting because it's actually gonna be forecasting a little bit of what I expect we're gonna see over the next six to 12 months. 
as we go through 2024. As soon as interest rates come down, this is the effect that you're seeing. You're seeing it right here because as you we just talked about, we had 8% rates in mid-October, and then as soon as they started to see that rate coming down, we all of a sudden saw a little push through December. So that's what kept those sale prices going up like we saw in December, and then it also brought our gaze on market down. It's not a major shift, but it's just forecasting a little bit of what I think we're gonna see as we go into 2024. And you can also see that reflected in this chart here. Now, bouncy ball, this is that month-to-month -month change, and this is seasonality again, kind of in a snapshot. Homes obviously selling for much more quickly, the low in the valley there during the summer months, and then those days on the market coming up in the winter as you would expect when people aren't out as much. So we were looking at this chart and I was watching this one fairly closely because uh, if I, maybe I can create a little line on the peaks of each of those, um, this is essentially what we saw. That's a pretty solid number. If rates hadn't come down, we'd have probably been more in this area. Um, and if the market was really majorly shifting, we would have seen that coming up, right? And with this one, and I would have expected we would have seen maybe it uh, looking something like here, and then as we go into next year, coming down and, and bouncing up, we really didn't see that as much. We stayed pretty low. It did come up to 33 days on market. Is that month to month change? Um, and that was a pretty good number. Uh, I would not have been surprised if it had gone higher, but with rates coming down, not too bad. So finally, two things that I'm gonna leave you with. First of all, I'll go back to this chart right here. I squiggled the lines. You will see as soon as rates come down, prices are gonna go up. And then also in the spring, we always see seasonality and prices go up. So I anticipate we're gonna have a bit of a double whammy as we go into 2024. And the second thing I wanna leave you with is I'm actually building out a home office right now. So make sure you subscribe because we're gonna be doing a podcast question and answer live show type of thing uh, from the home office and I'm really pumped to show you. So I hope you stick around and I'll see you on the next one.